Hello everybody. Today we're going to learn how to compare functions. So when we look at these first three examples, it says identify each table of values as linear, exponential, and quadratic. So I'm going to begin by checking the pattern for the x's. To go from negative 2 to negative 1, I add 1. From negative 1 to 0, I add 1. From 0 to 1, I add 1. And from 1 to 2, I add 1. For f of x, it looks like I am multiplying by 2 every time. And so that would make this table of values exponential because we have a pattern of multiplication. For example 2, to go from negative 2 to negative 1, I add 1. From negative 1 to 0, I add 1. From 0 to 1, I add 1. And from 1 to 2, I add 1. To go from negative 7 to negative 5, I add 2. Negative 5 to negative 3, I add 2. Negative 3 to negative 1, we add 2. And from negative 1 to positive 1, we add 2. So this table would be linear because we have a constant slope of 2 over 1. Um, here our pattern is addition, which makes it a linear function. For example 3, to go from negative 2 to negative 1, I add 1. Negative 1 to 0 is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. And 1 plus 1 is 2. Now this pattern doesn't look like it's multiplication or division. So let's see what happens when I add or subtract. To go from 2 to 0.5, I subtract 1.5. To go from 0.5 to 0, I subtract 0.5. To go from 0 to 0 0.5, I add 0.5. And to go from 0 0.5 to 2, I add 1.5. So that pattern is not consistent, so it's definitely not linear. Let's look at the second difference. To go from negative 1.5 to negative 0.5, we add 1. To go from negative 0.5 to positive 0.5, we add 1. And to go from positive 0.5 to 1.5, we add 1. Because our pattern is consistent with the second difference, that makes this one quadratic. We can also identify equations as linear, exponential, or quadratic. Example 4 is quadratic because our highest exponent is 2. Example 5 is linear because this is in slope-intercept form. And example 6 is exponential because the variable x is the exponent. We can also identify situations as linear, exponential, or quadratic. If you earn $2 for each chore you complete, that's going to be linear because you're going to be adding 2 every time. If you earn a 2% raise each year at your job, that's going to be exponential because you're going to be multiplying by a percentage every year. And then a skier's height as they jump in the air, well, that's going to make a parabola, and so this would be quadratic. We can compare functions. So in question one, it says what type of function is f of x? So f of x is this table right here. And so let's go ahead and identify this pattern. To go from one to two, I add one. Two to three, I add one. Three to four, I add one. And four to five, I add one. To go from negative seven to negative five, I add two. From negative 5 to negative 3, I add 2. Negative 3 to negative 1, I add 2. And negative 1 to positive 1, I add 2. So this um, table has a constant slope, which makes this a linear function. We also want to know what type of a function g of x is. g of x is given to us in this graph. G of x is a parabola, and so that makes this quadratic. 
Next, we want to know which function has the greatest rate of change over the interval from 2 to 4. So remember that rate of change is the same thing as slope, and we want to know which one is greater. For our interval notation, this is telling us to start when x is 2 and end when x is 4. So let's start off by looking at f of x. When x is 2, that's this right here. And when x is 4, that's this row right here. So if I'm going to do rise over run for my slope, to go from negative 5 to negative 1, I add a 4. And to go from 2 to 4, I add 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, which is the same slope that we found when we identified our pattern. And so that's how we know we found the slope correctly. For g of x, we want to begin when x is 2. So when x is 2, that's this point right here on the parabola. And when x is 4, that's this point right here. So to identify the slope of g of x between the interval of 2 to 4, I'm going to use rise over run. So I'm going to fall 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm going to run 2. So my slope is negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. We want to know which function has the greatest slope. Well, which number is greater? 2 or negative 2? Two? 2 is greater, so f of x has the greatest slope. For the next question, they want us to find which function has the lesser y-intercept. So if we look up at our table, we know that a y-intercept will happen when x is 0. So for x to be 0, I could work backwards. To go from 1 to 0, I'd have to subtract 1. To go backwards over here, I'd have to subtract 2. So negative 7 minus 2 is negative 9. So the y-intercept of f of x is 0, negative 9. The y-intercept for g of x, well, that's where the point crosses our y-axis, and that is this point right here at the point 0, 16. We want to know which one is lesser, so which one is smaller, negative 9 or 16. Negative 9 is smaller. So f of x has the lesser y-intercept. And then we want to know where these functions are equal. And so where are they the same? And so I'm going to start off by just looking at my points on my parabola that line up perfectly on the grid that give me exact points. And I'm just looking to see if any of these points are on my table. And when I look back at my table of values, I can see that the point 5, 1 is on the table, and that point is also on the graph right here. So f of x and g of x are equal at the point 5, 1.